Hi there, and welcome to another video. I received a whole bunch of new subscribers last week, which reminded me that I actually have a YouTube channel I'd completely forgotten. Last year, and sort of up to year, this year and up to now, has been incredibly busy. As you know, at Maxon we've purchased Redshift and uh, we've merged with Red Giant. So there's a whole bunch of uh, distractions being going on. But now I've uh, kind of picked up some more motivation and with all of the new arrivals. So hello to all the new arrivals, um, hello to all the old subscribers and uh, so I hope I can get some more videos out done for you. And up to now we've basically been looking at procedural modeling but I also love procedural texturing and a lot of people look at my work and they the first thing they say is um, is that done with substance? And the answer is no. I don't actually do anything with substance. I'm probably 100% Cinema 4D. And that means I use Cinema 4D's own procedural material systems to make things typically look old like this. This is the kind of thing I love to do. And um, one of my favorite shaders in the whole world that helps me to do this is Ambient Occlusion. I think it's the most flexible, awesome shader that we have. And uh, you can see the ambient occlusion, the way I use it, is, is actually to create dirt. And that's pretty much the main thing. When people say ambient occlusion, the first thing you think of is dirt. And that is what primarily I use it for. There's a few other things you can use it for, like masking, um, this, that, and the other. But in this case, I'm using it as a masking agent for dirt. And you can see the dirt here, coming around this knob and the camera. You can see it on the back here, but you but see the way it's all very uneven. There's no evenness to it. It's all very random, re like real dirt, you know. The same as here, and it's it's all over. This whole this image would not be possible without ambient occlusion. The whole thing is pretty much procedural, and I think apart from the scratches and this wood texture on the front here, the whole thing is completely procedural. And let's have a little look. This is the nut, the little knob that I was pointing to on the camera. And again, this is the exact same way I've created the dirt on the camera. It's basically just one dirt shader thrown on top of a metal shader. And uh, as I'm here in Bahans, if you do actually want to see any of my work, if you go to the About tab on my YouTube channel, you can actually find some links to my um, Twitter, Instagram and Bahans. So please, if you do like what you see, um, hit the subscribe and then you'll be able to follow any future videos, which I promise I'm going to get out more often in the future. So let's have a look at Cinema 4D. I've got a simple scene here set up, which would be like a typical scenario about where I'd want some dirt. I mean, because pretty much most of my stuff that I do privately is always dirty in some way. You know, the, the only time there's no dirt in my work is if a client has actually put a gun to my head and said, look, the don't make this, I want this nice and shiny, I want my product brand new so there's not going to be any dirt, but in my own first personal work I love dirt so the first thing I'm going to do is just leave everything as it is I have a material on my base cube here it's just literally a cube and I've got a single material on my nut and bolt so I'm going to leave that as it is, and what I, I like to work very physically so, you know, if you put dirt on a surface, well, the dirt is actually on the surface. It's not part of the surface, it's not in the surface, and I don't want the same in my inside Cinema 4D. I would like to actually put the dirt on top as a separate material. And this is where ambient occlusion comes in. It's absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, with ambient occlusion, I see a lot of people, they go up to the render settings, they find render ambient occlusion, and they just turn it on. And that's it, they walk away, they think, right, brilliant, I've got dirt. Well, that's simply not good enough, and one, um, applying ambient occlusion globally is never really a good idea, because it's going to create an ambient occlusion layer of dirt over everything. Every single object will have the same ray length, the same contrast, the same minimum, the same color, and it's just going to be too uniform. Where I, where I, when I'm doing my materials and texturing, I teach... Um, I take each object and treat them individually. I don't move on to the next object until that object is, you know, until I'm satisfied that object is ready. And that goes for the same as the ambient occlusion in the dirt. So when I'm looking at this object, I'm only looking at this. I'm li literally looking at 
what that nut fits into this environment and how it and the environment right now is just sitting on this on this red block and that's what I'm going to treat it as to start with I'm going to actually create a new material for my dirt and I'm going to double click in the material manager I'm going to open my material editor and for this example I'm not using the reflectance channel although normally every Im image I make is just using the reflectance channel I'm just using the color color just because it renders ultra ultra quick and it's very very snappy for you guys to be able to see and you're not going to have to sit around wait, waiting for it to render and this is where the magic happens in the alpha channel um, so I'm going to activate my alpha channel and I'm going to drop first my material onto my cube which will obviously uh, go white because it's a white material so I'm going to load in the effects my ambient occlusion shader and you straight away you might see this tiny little thing happening here that's the, mach the um, ambient occlusion shader as as, uh, uh, reacting as a mask but here so you might see a tiny little bit of red come through but again it's, it's inverted so how do we do that we just go to the invert tab hit invert and now we get our original red back and we can now start seeing our white material come through and we can click on the shader and get it, our settings these settings are pretty much exactly the same as what you get into the up in the global settings and I'm going to always take the contrast and stick it out right up to 100 straight away and immediately you can see that's why you know you can if it's at 100 then it's easier to come down rather than to like fumble around and find the right setting but usually 100 is always the way to go it always gives you a nice crisp edge to your dirt and again you can this is the other important one it's the max ray length right now 100 is because you know, this scene is actually quite big so 100 is sort of going from here that's where the start is because that's where the these two edges or these two surfaces meet and it's going to come out to about here and that's represented by this little gradient here so again if I bring this right down and now you can see some nice dirt on top of my red material so we're almost physical but exactly how do I get a nice uneven random dirt and this is where we go back to the beginning I use the one of my other favorite shaders is the layer shader in this layer shader it gives us the un unendless possibilities to then create our own shader it's like it's a bit like a visual programming way where we can just sort of create something in there and just creates one shader and the for the randomness for the, the if you want anything random in cinema 4d whether it's animation or materials or displacement the one and only thing to always head for is noise and you don't see anything right now because we need to turn off image alpha in the alpha channel and if we go back to our layer shader right now we are just simply applying noise inside the alpha channel and this is what you see you see the the black is taking away the, the um, in the alpha and it's showing the red material underneath so you're getting this sort of like mottled effect sort of is calf cutting away so what we're wanting to do we need to find a a, um, a layer mode rather like Photoshop and and uh, Illustrator and inside Sima 4D we do actually have one of the most amazing um, modes that I've ever seen and it's absolutely brilliant and it's called lever and all I have to do is simply hit lever and now I get a very random pattern that's um, that's exactly what I'm looking for and with our ambient occlusion because we have procedural parameters I can now start going in and just playing around and like I said with the contrast you can see what happens now with the contrast you can also c control it but I always leave this at a hundred percent mostly anyway and because we're using noise if I go back up one 
we can use different noises. Uh, let's try the roar noise. Like that. So that gives a pleasing effect. And um, obviously, let's give this, this, this nice color so we can see what we're doing. And and what's great about the materials tag stacking, and like I said about how I, I like to work procedurally, uh, well, more in a physical way, the tag stacking then gives me the opportunity to then keep stacking dirt on top of each other, like in a real world, you know. If, there's not just one kind of dirt. If if something's been handled m over many many years, then it's, it's yeah, there's different layers have been built up of different dirt and this kind of the other. And what I'd like to do is just take my original shader that I've created. And I'm going to control drag a copy. Open it up in my material editor. I'm going to drop it onto the cube as well straight away. Uh, let's change its color to something different and then I go back to my controls where I control my dirt which is my ambient occlusion shader inside the layer shader and here I can just simply say for example bring the ray length in and all of a sudden I'm starting to be able to layer all of my dirt and now you can keep building up and building up it's, it's pretty cool and for example you can even activate the bump channel stick some noise in there in the bump channel and you start to get even more texture into there. Say for example we can oh what would work uh, let's see now let's see what would that do yeah you see this you get some nice bump and texture material in there wonder what would happen if you bring that right up see yeah and there you get some nice dirt as well an actual physical texture so like I said that's how I make my dirt, I treat every single object individually and right now I'm not going to be able to treat every object individually because I'm just throwing my material on using UV mapping so that means every nut on this surface is going to receive this and this is why um, if you stay inside Cinema 4D if I just close this for a minute and then open my double scene and I copy those up. As I said, you know, both of these nuts now are going to receive the ambient occlusion. But what if I change my mapping to flat, go to my texture gizmo, rotate it round. Oops. I've got my rendering running, so this is difficult to do. Let's see if I can. Yeah, 90. 180. So, right now, so I've got it into flat mapping, but it's still obviously going to affect both nuts. So, all I have to do is if I turn off tiling, now you can see if I move my texture axes over here, this dirt is now only affecting this nut and not over here. This is still, this nut is still only being affected by the top layer of dirt. So this has now its own characteristics and this is how I do treat objects within a main group say for example the, the camera that just because the dirt looks like this here doesn't mean I want the dirt on this one to look like this or here I might want it to look differently I might you know the fingers might move more to there and more dirt will gradually build up over on this part and this is what I'm wanting to do when I'm doing my texturing and cinema is very good at doing this and so basically yeah that's how I create dirt and I will also create that kind of dirt w for the um, actual objects and again I'm not going to move on until the next one until I'm ac actually really happy and also my tip is take your time you know, don't rush on just you know, treat each of an individual object as, a, as an individual and you know, really have a look and see how and where does the dirt collect on this object? You know, where do the fingers rub against this object? You know, where would the dirt less be? And that kind of thing. That's what I spend a lot of my time doing when I'm doing my my texturing. Uh, so I hope that was helpful. And um, I think in the next video I'm going to use this exact same technique to be able to do some worn edges.
because ambient occlusion has also a reverse function which not only allows me to apply dirt here it could also uh, I can also use it as a mask to cut away instead of add onto a surface I can cut a surface away to reveal underneath perfect for worn surface, scratches surfaces, that kind of thing, especially on edges and corners. So I hope you liked it, and if you like it, subscribe please, and I'll see you again soon in another video.